This is the beginning of my video, which is entitled, How My Interest in the Clothes Washer Became My Interest in Plumbing, Part 3. Resumed from the ending of my video, How My Interest in the Clothes Washer Became My Interest in Plumbing, Part 2. However, this loop was different, for instead of going into the floor at the bottom of the cabinet, this loop went into the wall at the back of the cabinet in a way which made the loop appear to be only a half loop, but it was a loop nonetheless. I was already familiar with the bathtub and the toilet, so I did not need to do any additional searching elsewhere in the bathroom. Somewhere either before or after I searched the bathroom in the hallway, I also searched my father's study in spite of my familiarity with that room but I was able to verify to myself that there were no pipes or basins in my father's study. Meanwhile, in my search for pipes in every room, I was especially careful to search walls, for walls not only comprised the very limits of the space which comprised a room, but they also served as good mounting places for pipes and basins. Because of this, I was also careful to search for any nooks, crannies or unexplained structural aberrations on the walls of a room which looked like they might create hidden spaces which, for all I knew, might be harboring pipes. I knew that walls also contained doorways into other rooms, but I was pretty sure that I had seen every doorway in the house. For this reason, closets also had to be searched. Meanwhile, I moved steadily back into the hallway toward the other end of the house, where my search finally culminated in the bedroom where my parents slept, its doorway located on the right side of the hallway, directly across from the doorway of my bedroom at the left of the hallway. I had seen that bedroom many times as well, and I hadn't ever seen any pipes or basins in there either. Nevertheless, nothing could be taken for granted. So I proceeded into that room, again, checking all along the walls since they could harbor basins along with their pipes. For a while, I did not find anything. And then, suddenly, I saw something. In one corner of the bedroom was a doorway, which I did think I had ever seen before, and I certainly did not think I had ever learned what was beyond that strange door in the bedroom wall all the way in the corner of the bedroom. Immediately, I headed toward the doorway and walked in. When I walked in, I found myself in what appeared to be another bathroom, which seemed something like the bathroom in the hallway, except that this bathroom seemed somewhat smaller. Another difference with this bathroom was that, unlike the white-colored fixtures in the hallway bathroom, the fixtures in this bathroom were yellow. I saw in this bathroom a toilet along with a sink. However, the sink in this bathroom did not have a cabinet. Instead, it was mounted on the wall with the pipes underneath it fully exposed so that I was happy to not have the obstacle of a cabinet door to contend with, as was the case in the other bathroom. Immediately, I went and stood in front of the sink to investigate the shiny chrome piping that was located underneath the sink. The most prominent feature of the underside of the sink was that large diameter shiny chrome pipe about an inch and a quarter in diameter that came out in a straight line downward from the bottom most part of the sink, then curved around in the gooseneck half loop that took the pipe toward and then into the wall on which the sink was mounted, just as in the other bathroom. However, I also noticed that behind and to the right and left of that large central pipe were two smaller pipes that were also made of that same chrome colored material. They were about three eighths of an inch in diameter and they came down from somewhere inside the sink. At first, those small pipes came downward, curving slightly where each of the small pipes terminated in its own wall appendage, which looked something like a faucet, complete with an oval-shaped knob on the front of it. I wondered what these wall faucets were for, especially since they existed in addition to the main faucet on top of the sink, which was obviously required to fill the sink. 
Meanwhile, all three of those pipes under the sink looked physically beautiful, not only because of their shiny silvery color, but also because of the fact that I knew that those pipes were for water in some unknown way. Meanwhile, the entire room in which I was standing felt peaceful, and a strange, pleasant atmosphere seemed to fill the room as the indirect light of the afternoon sun shone through the bathroom's single window on the wall opposite the sink and the toilet. And I stared at those pipes for quite some time before finally leaving the room. Now I want to talk about the next major incident that immediately followed that search and my resulting discovery of that previously unknown bathroom in my parents' bedroom because I consider that incident to be a turning point and a critical milestone in the development of my interest in plumbing, especially since it happened at just the point where my interest in the washer was still in the process of transitioning into an interest in the broader scope of that larger super realm that I first learned around the age of six is called plumbing. I am not sure how soon it happened after the incident where I searched the entire house specifically for plumbing, whether it was a week, a month, or a few months, but it was as though after all of that time I had spent learning about the washer and being introduced to water, water flow, and pipes through my initial interest in the washer and then advancing to learning how to search for water pipes and basins in unexpected places, while at the same time learning that all of these things were part of the super realm of plumbing, which connected them all, I was finally being subjected to a test whose sole purpose was to determine just how much I really knew about this super realm of plumbing that I had just discovered and what I was going to do with what I knew about plumbing. And I am happy to know that I quote unquote passed. As it happened, my baby brother Jeffrey had recently been born and my mother changed his diapers on a plastic metal framed changing table that had been set up in my parents' bedroom and which was located against the wall of the bedroom in the space between the foot of the bed and the entrance to that second bathroom that I had recently discovered. The changing table had a flat top and also had several square-shaped plastic drawers which were located in an orderly fashion from the top to the bottom of the table unit and which could be opened and shut from both sides of the table unit. It was there in my parents' bedroom that this test was quote-unquote administered. One evening, I was randomly wandering the house when I came upon the entrance to my parents' bedroom that I had seen so many times previously. The door to the bedroom was open, and I could see into the bedroom where, directly across from me on the opposite wall of the bedroom, sat the changing table. The incandescent lighting in the bathroom had been turned on, and the light from the bathroom illuminated the bedroom in spite of the fact that the lighting in the bedroom itself had not been turned on. Meanwhile, I stared at the changing table like I had done so many times before, but as I did so, something about the changing table suddenly seemed strange. The changing table had about four levels of drawers from the tabletop to the floor of the bedroom. Each of the drawers on the changing table extended halfway across the total width of the changing table so that the inner ends of the drawers faced each other. But there was something strange about the container that was located just under the tabletop itself. It seemed to have about the same depth as the other drawers, except that it did not seem to be a drawer, especially since it did not have the pull-out handles that the other drawers had. In addition, not only did this top container seem not to be one of the table's regular drawers, but it was large enough to extend the total width of the table unit, and instead of having square dimensions like the other drawers had, it was slightly rounded around all of its sides. Immediately, I became suspicious of this container because I thought that it looked more like a basin that could hold a liquid rather than a drawer which was designed to hold diapers or some other solid material. 
The fact that I could see no faucets or water pipes around the changing table did not do anything to lessen my suspicion about the basin-like container on the changing table. Instead, if anything, it only aroused my suspicions even further because I had no idea as to what a basin could possibly be doing in an environment that was not supposed to contain any water pipes or faucets. Immediately, I walked not only in the general direction of the changing table, but directly to the left of the changing table where I then partly lifted the white plastic tabletop to have that desperately needed look inside the container. When I looked in, I saw a large empty space that was lit up by the light from the bathroom that filtered through the white plastic walls of the ovular container. And lying inside the container was a white hose that spanned the entire length of the container and which had an internal diameter of about a half inch. Immediately, I wondered what that hose was for since it didn't have any threads on it like the garden hose or anything else that indicated that the hose could possibly be attached to a faucet or to something else. But the hose looked physically beautiful, especially when I thought about the fact that that hose could carry water in some way. I reached into the container, picked up one end of the hose, and held it in my hand. It felt pleasant as well. The entire hose had a white color and a vinyl kind of texture. The entire circumference of the hose was covered with small raised ridges that ran the entire length of the hose. The hose also felt pleasantly flexible in my hand. I stared at that hose while slightly playing with it for some time before I put the hose back into the container and walked away. Since then, my mother has explained to me that the ovular container on the changing table was the quote-unquote bathtub and that the hose I saw inside it was for draining the basin. Now, I have a final postscript for this presentation. The reason why you have seen those periodic fluctuations in the sound and picture quality during this presentation that you did not see in my other presentations is because the brighter and better sound quality comes from the video that was taken with my father's Fuji FinePix J38 camera and the dimmer picture and the lesser sound quality was taken with the Fuji FinePix XP20 that I bought as my own camera and used for parts of this presentation that I discovered needed some editing after I had to temporarily give my father's camera back to him. In future videos, I will work on maintaining the best possible sound and picture quality on the video that I shoot with my new Fuji XP20. And while I'm at it, I can promise still another thing. That, as long as it's in my control, I will use the best possible cameras to shoot my YouTube video material so that you will never have to worry about seeing blurry, splotchy, distorted, or jerky video coupled with unintelligible sound accompaniment from my corner.